Welcome to Trianic 7, the YouTube channel for Saab enthusiasts. I've been looking forward to making this video for a long time, because today it is finally time to install OpenSID. This monitor here is the Saab information display. We usually call it SID. And with a simple change in the ECU, you can make the SID show you detailed information about the engine, which is not available to the user when the car is sold. So we can, for instance, check for engine fault codes, we can check engine temperature, we can check air mass, and a lot of other things that are nice for us Saab geeks. Now, as simple as this may sound, I need to stress that modifying the ECU and installing OpenSID well, it's not for the beginner. You will need to modify the software of, of this so-called ECU. And the ECU controls exactly everything your engine does, including timing and, uh, and fuel and uh, injectors, everything. So the risks are not high, but they are moderate. So be sure to do everything right and follow the instructions I give in this video. First, you will need a spare ECU, and you can actually use any ECU from a Trionic 7 engine. You see it says T7 here. Most Saab 9.5s are running Trionic 7, and some of the early Saab 9.3s do also. But do not use a Trionic 8 or Trionic 5 ECU, because that will obviously not work. We will be using a spare ECU, because we will not flash any software to the stock ECU. Instead, we will read out the software currently in the car, save it to the computer, modify this uh, binary file on the computer, then we will install a new ECU, let's call it the spare, and then we will flash the software onto this spare. So if anything goes wrong, all you need to do is to put back the stock ECU back into the car. I need to point out as well that on average 2% of all ECU flashings fail. So there's a definite chance of something going wrong. Now you can buy an ECU for not too much money. They're very 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 expensive to buy new but usually you can just find someone is taking apart or breaking their car and just buy the ECU of them. You don't need to care about the car model as long as it says T7 here. In addition, you will need an adapter to connect to the car's CAN bus system. This adapter is made by one of the Saab enthusiasts on the Trionic Tuning Forum. His username is John C. I believe he's from Latvia. And he makes this uh, adapter, it's called the Combi adapter. And you can contact him via the forum and he will ship it out for you. The cost, including shipping within Europe, is about 100 euros. I don't know about the rest of the world, but you can just send him a message on the forum. I will take a further look on the Combi adapter in another video. Also, this guide should not be taken as a standalone guide to the open SID and ECU flashing, simply because of the risks involved. Instead, this guide is a companion to other guides find online such as on trionictuning.com. You will also need an access to the CAN bus system, and you cannot use the instrument bus that connects things like the radio and the ACC panel, but you will need access to the car's P bus or power bus. I have another video on this channel, I will put the link down in the description, where I show how to install P bus connectors into the car's diagnostic port in here. If you don't want to modify your car to add P-Bus connectors, you can also hook up your ECU on a benchtop and connect power and CAN bus wiring to the adapter directly. This way you will just keep the car stock. The drawback with this is that you will need to take out the ECU uh, whenever you want to do further modifications. I installed P-Bus wiring in my car because I want to do real-time logging in the future and also be doing several small modifications. Since I have a PBUS connector in the diagnostic port, I will do the connection here, opening up the port and inserting 
the connector. This cable I'm using is a OBD2 port to the sub 9 port. This looks like a serial cable. And the important thing is that you check the wiring diagrams to make sure the CAN plus and minus wiring is onto the, connect, onto the correct pins here on the serial port. I connect the serial cable to the combi adapter and then the combi adapter with the USB cable and put the other end into my laptop. There we go. And you can now see LEDs running on the combi adapter which means we have booted and powered up the adapter. Software wise you will probably need to be running Windows and on Windows you install two programs T7 suit which is what I'm running here and also Trionic CAN flasher. So let's go ahead and read out the software from the ECU. I've started the program Trionic CAN flasher I have set the adapter type to the correct type, combi adapter. I will give start the ignition, then turn it off. Now we have 15 minutes of power to the ECU. Here's Trionic CAN flasher again. Do not use flash ECU since this will write new software onto the ECU. Instead we will read. We click read, then we can select the file name. I will call it stock because this this is the stock bin. Then we press save. And if every, everything works correctly, you will see the message starting download of flash, and then this progress bar here loading fully. Since I'm running over the PBUS system, it's going to be a fairly quick process. I can also see that both the green LEDs are turned on, which means that flash is in progress. If this just doesn't happen to you and instead you get a single blink from the red LED, you probably have some problem with the connection. So double check all the wiring to make sure everything goes to the right place. And we're almost done with the reading. And we finished downloading Flash. Total duration for this was 1 minute and 39 seconds, which is an awesome time. I really managed to get a really good connection with the PBUS when I did my OBD2 PBUS install. This means that we're done with the reading, and I suggest you make a backup copy of this stock bin and save it to somewhere safe. This bin file will contain the whole software for your car, including the important VIN and immobilization numbers. So save a copy of this extra so you have a backup and then we will load the bin file. The, let's just make a copy so we don't disturb the original. And this one we will modify and flash to our new ECU. And now that we're done reading out the software from the stock ECU, I will be attaching the new ECU to the wiring harness. If you want instructions on how to remove and install a Saab 9.5 ECU, check out another video that I'm about to upload to the channel. I'll put a link down in the description. Here I have jerry-rigged the spare ECU onto the ECU connector. How to do this I'll show you in the aforementioned video on ECU replacement. This way we can flash this ECU and check if anything goes wrong before we attach it uh, to the system. We are back again in the car with my laptop and I have opened the stock bin I downloaded recently. Now I go here in T7 suit, I go to actions and then firmware information. You will see the engine type, software version and immobilizer code and chassis ID. These are blurred in the video because they are sensitive numbers and I don't want half of the internet knowing these numbers. The programming date it's the 30th of August 2015 and then the SID date. Basically what we want to do is simply check open SID info down here. And then you, there's a little message telling you about the parameters. Simply press OK. And now we press OK here. And then go File, 
save all. Binary was already up to date. Good. This means that we have now modified our binary file and we are ready to flash it back onto the spare ECU. For flashing we want to turn off anything that might draw power from the battery. Start by turning off the interior lights. Then, just for added measure, remove the cooling fan fuses from the relay box in the engine. Don't forget to put these back afterwards. This one and this one here. The reason we're removing the cooling fan fuses is that the cooling fans actually start to run during flashing even though the engine is off and the temperature is low. Also, if the battery voltage runs too low or if your computer loses power during flashing, the flash will obviously fail. If possible, also add a battery charger to the battery. Back in the car, turn on the ignition. Don't start the engine, just the ignition. Uh, the ECU we just put in has an unknown software, so just ignition and off. This will give us 15 minutes of ECU power. Back at the laptop, connect everything up, then select flash ECU. It says attach the charger. Now turn off, turn on and off key to wake up ECU. This is done. We press OK. Now we select our bin that we want to flash. And here we go. Update flash content. Forty-eight seconds is all it took. Now it's just connection closed. Done. The new software is loaded, but it isn't active yet. To make it active, pull fuse number 17. Be careful. When you pull fuse number 17, you will load the memory with the new software. If your flashing failed, the ECU will be bricked. You will not be able to flash a new software. Double check the software is loaded then pull the fuse. Fuse out. And fuse back in. Put back the cooling fan fuses and make sure the engine is ready to start. Okay, moment of truth. Looks good. I'll turn the fans off. There's no warning lights on the dash. If there were, we would have made some mistake. Or if the engine was dead, then the ECU would have been dead. So then, let's check open SID. Push both buttons here. Here is open SID. Wow, look at all this beautiful information. RPM, lambda correction, we have uh, temperatures, lots of stuff. I will make a separate video of how to use OpenSID. But this shows it is working. To get back, press both buttons again. And there we go. Next, finalize the ECU installation. After you put the new ECU back in the correct position, take a test drive. Start by idling and listening that everything sounds right and take a short test drive, then a longer test drive and see that everything works fine. And to conclude, we need to remember that flashing the ECU is potentially harmful to the ECU and that we will need to have backups and uh, alternative methods for flashing if something fails. I hope this video was useful to you. If you like one of these videos or have a thought about it, please leave a comment below. And this has been Treonic7, the YouTube channel for Saab enthusiasts, with a video of how to enable OpenSID in your Saab 9.5. Follow us on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Reddit, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.